Good morning. How's everybody doing? Yeah? Hey, who's ready to climb with me? All right. Hey, before we got to climb, we got to get dressed, you know? This morning, we're going to get dressed. That's why some of this stuff is here. That's, that's why I didn't wear these. As someone called it, my leotard. Um, there's a reason I didn't wear my leotard, or AKA bibs, um, this morning to church, because one, you want to talk about discomfort. <laughs> Mostly for you guys, not me. I like those things. Um, we have to get prepared for our journey. This morning, uh, I was sent this by Ben Tower, and it's, uh, he sent me the digital version, which is sometimes better than the hard paper version, because I can look at it on my phone. Um, but if you have the Our Daily Bread, the title of it is Strength for Your Journey. And as I was reading that, I was thinking about the message this morning, and I have to say, that sometimes we find our strength in different places. And so I've, I've adopted that title this morning, and I've titled my message, instead of dressing for the climb, we're going to have strength for our journey. Um, so so let's, let's dig in. You guys ready? Okay, really, are you ready? Did anyone put their clothes on this morning? Is this the first time? That's okay. That's okay. Okay, i got a couple eyes looking at me like, what are you talking about, Ben? Is there someone naked in here? I'm not seeing them. Spiritually, maybe. Um, let's, let's dig in. Ephesians 6, verse 10. I'm not going to read the entirety of Ephesians 6. Uh, if you want to, I can show you where it's at in the Bible, and we can go from there. But I want to start with the spiritual armor of God. So, verse 10. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armors, so that you will be, you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. I want to stop there for a second. We're all in different spots in our journey, personally. And then we come together to find unity as a mighty army for one purpose in God's army. So we come from all these different situations in our life and, and we have to be prepared for that. And Satan's going to attack us separately and together. And we have to be prepared. Where should we find our strength? Well, let's go on to verse 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God Give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we're about ready to dig in and get dressed for you, Lord, I pray that you would put a boldness that you, would, that you would remind us of where our strength lies. That, it's, that we come before you and we, we sacrifice everything we thought we wanted for everything that you are. Lord, strengthen us as a family this morning for this climb. Help us get prepared by dressing us this morning for the climb. For this, this venture we are about to take together. But Lord, also remind us of our own spiritual journey separately. And help us be prepared for that. So that when we come together... We are strengthened for the weak. Jesus, thank you for everything. Open our ears to hear and our, our eyes to see what you have to say to us this morning. But Lord, speak. Speak. Open, open our ears for your words. In your name. Amen. All right, let's, let's dig into what, what that scripture means. I want to start off with the belt of truth. Now in cycling, we sometimes go on these crazy rides. 30 mile, 40 mile. 50 mile, 88 mile, right? 
Longest climb I've done. I've, I've always dreamt of doing a century ride, which is 100 miles. In one day? Yeah. 10 days. There you go. 30 miles. It's tough. I want to do 100 miles in one ride. One day. Because I'm crazy and dumb. Amen. Comes from the back. Comes from my beautiful wife. But I did 88 miles one day in Iowa when I rode Rag Bry, and I was wearing probably this stuff right here, maybe, maybe that jersey back there, I don't know. But I did 88 miles, and we had the, the steepest, longest incline that day. And then I've done multiple 30, 40 mile rides where I would do a four mile incline. One incline, not multiple to make four miles, one four mile incline. I know you're shaking your head at me. I love that incline. I love hills. One thing we noticed on Ragbri when I was riding across Iowa, Lola noticed this. She said, everybody would pass you going downhill, Ben. But no one could pass you going uphill. Because I love hills. Why? Because I know through the power of my legs, I can pump through it, and I can get all the way to the top of the hill, and I can get there faster than you, and I can get there stronger than you, and still have the power to go down the hill. I'm just not as aerodynamic as some of the shorter people in the room. And so my body is like a parachute. I was built for climbing. But God designed me that way so he would have this spiritual analogy for you. You are built for climbing. You are not built for the easy path. You were built for a hard path. Oh no, Ben, come on. Life's hard enough. I don't need to be built for it. Come on, that's why he built you that way. Right? And so let's dig in. The belt of truth. I don't have any belt when I'm cycling, but I sure do have these bibs. They're not a leotard. These bibs. These bibs will hold up. When I'm cycling, I do not want my pants to fall off. Okay? They also will not hold moisture. They are moisture wicking. Ooh, fancy, huh? Ooh. Because when you're on a climb, when you're going to go up a four-mile incline, you do not want your sweat holding you back. Anybody in your spiritual journey want your spiritual sweat to hold you back? Anybody? Raise a hand. Come on. Nobody wants your spiritual sweat to hold you back from what God's got for you, right? Same thing in cycling. I don't want my physical sweat to hold me back. Now, this doesn't hold as much sweat as something like this would, but we'll get to that in a second. But when you're, when you're wearing some clothing and you're cycling, you don't want to keep on pulling up your pants. Mark would know this better than the rest of us. Um, if he were to put on the bicycling shorts, I know from experience, that's why I got the bibs, I had to pull them up randomly. Why? Because they would slide off. Because if you have no butt... <laughs> now Mark's laughing. Am I right? So spiritually, if you have no butt, you've got to put on a belt. Right? Or in this case, if my spiritual journey is like a bike ride, I'm going to throw my bibs on. Right? We've got to keep our bibs up. This is why. The belt of truth or the bibs of truth allow us to keep our mind on what really matters, not on the lies that make us feel exposed. When we hold up our britches by a belt, the lies can't get to us spiritually. And so when we hold up our britches or our bibs, and we're riding along, we can put it in confidence that the lies that are coming at us aren't going to penetrate because my bibs can't fall off. I can't feel exposed. Anybody ever feel exposed in life? Right? Right? Maybe start praying, Lord, let's put on that belt of truth. As you dress in the morning and you're putting on a literal belt, it's okay to say, Lord, as I put on this belt, let this represent your belt of truth. I don't want to feel exposed this morning. I want to know your truth. I don't want to know the lies the world is going to throw at me. So put it on. Put it on. It's funny because the belt, something down here is used for focus. Did you get that? The belt is used for focus. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the shield used for focus, it's the belt. The belt, starting with the belt, something around your waist, is used to help you focus. 
Are you picking that up? Like, I mean, seriously, if your britches fall off, what's happening? Where's your focus go? Yeah, right? So we got to keep the belt on. Next, we have the body armor of God's righteousness. We have to wear, in, in hiking, when you're hiking up a mountain, 14,000 feet, if I had a picture, I, I would put it up. That's for another sermon, but um, you're up at 14,000 feet. You're closer to the sun than you are here in Illinois. And with clouds, you're going to burn a lot more. Then it's a cloudy day. I don't need to wear sunscreen. I would recommend it. It's like body armor. So sometimes we have to think about body armor. In cycling, excuse me, in cycling, I don't mean to do this. This is weird, but I have to put on the jersey, right? In cycling, you're going to throw on your jersey. Your jersey is like, is like body armor. One, it's going to protect your body from rocks. I mean, not all rocks. If a car goes by, I mean, pfft, good luck. But it also creates an aerodynamic feel that a t-shirt can't do. It's also moisture wicking, so your, your sweat won't hold you back. Anybody ever have a problem running? And you're, you, you ran and your sweat would just, it would just soak your shirt and all of a sudden you'd have a hard time breathing? Anybody ever have that? No? Okay, maybe I'm the only one. No. When you run and you're running in cotton, your cotton will collect all the sweat and hold it all. You know, until it becomes so wet that it starts dripping. Okay? This, good luck behind me. Right, Lola? As I sweat, it might just shoot off. My bad. Okay. But God wants us to put on something that's going to take the sweat, the stuff that holds us back, put it on so that when it comes at us, when someone shoots at you, when someone hits you, it just deflects. He calls us to wear body armor to protect. See, I'm protecting my ride. I'm, I'm wanting to go further. And if I have something that's cotton on, it, it'll act, one, like a parachute, and two, it'll act like it's, it's suffocating me. Right? The zipper here, if this ever gets too much, I can just unzip it a little bit. And so I can ride. If this isn't breathable enough, which it normally is, I can unzip it more. Now I'm not going to... Thankfully, I have an undershirt. Um, but that's, that's real. And so you can unzip it if it's too hot and you can keep on riding. And, and you have the water down here to keep on... So we have to put on God's body armor. See, we also have gloves, and I'm going to put those on in a little bit because they, they make a better analogy somewhere else, but we also have gloves that will shoot, you know, when rocks shoot up, when lies shoot up at you, you know, you can punch those lies right out. You get that? And it's by righteousness that you can punch those lies away. It's, it's in righteousness that you can punch this, the devil away. Do you get that? Like, you get to kick his butt. Isn't that good? You get to kick his butt. He doesn't get to kick yours. He's not allowed. If you said yes to Jesus, Jesus is sitting there going, don't let him get you down. You've got power over that. This is what, uh, I, I pulled this definition of a jersey offline because they say it better than me. The material used in cycling jersey is made to wick away sweat and ventilate you. Body armor. Body armor should never keep you down. You know, we think about body armor, we think medieval times, and we think, oh, this is so heavy. You got, the, you got the big metal sheets, but God's body armor is not heavy. It's, it's much like this cycling jersey. It's lightweight. It barely weighs anything. It's super thin, but it's aerodynamic because it doesn't want to keep you down. Right? It also said this, a cycling jersey is more aerodynamic and tra than traditional clothing. Right? I said that. I said that, you know, when you... When you wear a cotton t-shirt and you're riding, it's more like a parachute. When I first got this bike, I didn't have the clothing. And I wore a t-shirt, uh, like a, a tank top. And I rode it with my brother one time. And he goes, it looks like this parachute's holding you back. I switched and all of a sudden I found this new strength. It's when you switch what you're wearing. It's where you're finding your spiritual clothing matters. You can either buy it at Walmart or the most expensive store in God's heavenly places called Beverly Heavenly Hills, right? And you can spend more time 
looking and picking out the nicest, fanciest, most athletic, spiritually athletic clothing. And if you get the good stuff, the God stuff, you're going to go longer. You're going to be able to fight more. You're going to be able to to ride further. You're going to look at a four-mile incline and go, little stuff. Why? Let's go back to the title. Where's your strength? It's not in the clothing. It's in the God who made the clothing. We got to get to the shoes. This isn't going to be long. I'm, I'm just going through these. Because we got to get dressed. Are you guys in unity with that? Like, hey, let's get dressed for this climb. Right? We got to get dressed. So let's get to the shoes. I'm going to take mine off because these won't work. Okay? Shoes. These shoes are specific to those pedals, which is funny because these are called clipless cleats and those are clipless pedals, although I have to clip into them. Explain that one. So you got the shoes of peace, and where does that come from? The gospel. Why are the shoes so important for the gospel? That's a good question, Ben. I'd like to know. Well, I'm glad you asked. So the shoes are so important because if you put regular shoes on, you can only take the gospel so far. If you put shoes on that don't fit, you can take it even less as far, right? So... I want to put on the shoes that were made for my climb, for my journey. Are you guys hungry for the shoes that were made for your climb? Are you hungry for for the truth that God has put in the gospel? Here's my question. Not are you hungry for the truth that God has put in the gospel, but are you ready to take it with you? So you got to get on the bike now. Got the shoes on. I should pull this over. I'm getting on the bike. You want my shoes? You don't want my shoes. My shoes are old. When you cycle, when you're biking and you're climbing, if you don't have these shoes on, all you can do is push. What God calls us to do is pull and kick, pull and kick. I'm kicking Satan down because all I have to do is pull and kick. Get off me, Satan. Get off me. I get to pull and kick and push. Right? If I'm called for the gospel, if I'm called for the gospel, I want to be able to pull and push. Why? Because it's not found in my own strength, it's found in the strength that God has for me. He provided the shoes of the gospel so I could pull and push. Pull and push. And I can even pump this up. Let's go full power, Ben. We're pulling, we're pushing. And we're just going. And we're going up that four mile incline. And we're speeding up. What? We're just going. Anybody want to do this? For the gospel? You want to go so fast? I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I should put that down. That's, see how hard that is? Woo! Now I'm tired. Anybody want to take over for me? So we got the shoes. Shoes will either stop you or make your journey. I went on a hike with my uncle. And uh, his, his husband went with us. Whew. Glad I have water. Man, we need to ride again, honey. And we started coming down the mountain. And uh, we went up this 14,000 mountain, foot mountain called a Democrat in Colorado. One of, the, one of the collegiate peaks. And what happened was his shoes weren't fitted well. They weren't tight. And as you come down, if your shoes aren't good, start stubbing your toe. You're going to slow down. Got to take more breaks. The blood's going to start flowing. You gotta stop. Your shoes are so important. The gospel you are founded on will either stop you or direct you. The gospel truth 
that you are founded on will either stop you or make you. It'll either take you to the destination you're looking at or it'll break you completely. Anybody ever wear a pair of uncomfortable shoes? Yeah, you don't want to wear them all day? What if you're on, a you're on your feet all day? Nurses, medical people, you're on your job, you know, you wear the fanciest high heels you can, or, right men? <sighs> no, you find some nice comfy tennis shoes that are in, in code, right? You wear Crocs, I'm just kidding. Maybe you do, I don't know. <sighs> but you find the comfiest shoes you can. It doesn't matter how they look because you don't care. You won't make it through your day if you're going off of looks. But you will if you're going off of the comfort of the gospel. In our spiritual journey, we choose to put on one shoe one day and another shoe the next, and we forget the comfortable one, the one that God made, the one that, that makes your feet work. I had another pair of shoes that were too big at one time, and I tried pedaling with them, and I felt like Dumbo the Clown. And I, you know, you just pedal, and, and you're, all of a sudden your shoe's falling off. Not good. You can't pedal with both feet then. Then you see me struggling with one foot, but I'm kicking. But aren't we, aren't we called to be, you know, aren't we called? This, is, this, this part of the message is like, go out and get them. Where do I find my strength? In the strength of the gospel. Right? You like this? You like this? Are you hearing it this morning? Is this new to you this morning? Are you catching something new? Wow. The, putting on the... The armor of God can be fun. It can't just be this chore we do in the morning. Check mark. It should never be the check mark thing. It should be the I want it thing. Yeah. Same principle. Right? What about this? What about the shield of faith? Now, Ben, what are you going to use for the shield of faith? Well, I told you about these gloves. I don't like wearing gloves when I bike, so we'll put those over there. <laughs> you have someone going 30, 40 miles by you and spitting up rocks. You think, oh, Ben, where are the, where are the gloves? I just don't like them. Hey, Amen. have you ever been told, shield your eyes? These are a special sunglass. The lens is, is different. It helps me see shadows that the normal eye wouldn't see. It's specifically designed for cycling, the lens. Now what's cool about these is I can take the lens out. If I take the lens out, I have a harder time focusing on the road. We have the shield of faith. If our faith is grounded in the Word of God, I'm not going to put those on the whole time, but if our faith is, is grounded in the Word of God, then we realize that our faith is actually seen as, as being the lens of Christ. And so in this analogy, your eyes represent the Holy Spirit. And if you're not carrying a lens, there's a possibility you damage the Holy Spirit in your life. You have to put the shield of faith on to protect that Holy Spirit that's in your life. If a rock comes up, you don't want it to hit your eyeball. You don't want it to shatter your glasses. That's why these are supposed to be shatterproof. You don't want the wind to hit your eyes and dry them out. So you wear the sunglasses to shed the wind. You know? If you have glasses on in the morning when you put your glasses on or when you put your contacts in, you're putting on the shield of faith. You're saying, nothing can attack me. Nothing's going to make me go blind. If I go blind on a bicycle and I'm riding out in public, guess what happens? Not, nothing good. If I keep on pedaling, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, something's going to hit me or I'm going to hit it. One of my mentors, his, his name is Hunter Johnson. He was hit by a car one time before I met him. And, and he was so nervous the first time I got on a bike with him because it was the first time he rode on a, on a street. And he would go so slow. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. He might be watching this tonight, but I don't know if I can do this. But I have this rule that if we're a team, we will only go as fast as the slowest person. So if I know I'm not the fastest person or if I know I'm the slowest person, or if I know I'm the fastest person, I will get behind the person that's slowest. And I'll just keep them company. And I'll just keep on riding. Why? Because I have all this body armor. 
And I know I can support them and get them to wear the same thing. I know if I just train them, if I help them, if I go alongside them, I'm not training them, but if, if I go alongside them, I can get them up to the pace they should be going. This is called a cadence every time I go around. Lance Armstrong had about 100, uh, they, they call it like 100% cadence. And so he pedaled like this all the time. No matter how hard it was or how soft it was. Normal professional cyclists are about 70. So if you're going like this, Lance, Lance Armstrong, drug you or not, whatever. If you're going like this and you can go for 150 miles, that's pretty good. That's what God is calling us to. He's saying, I've got you, just put your faith in me. Shield the Holy Spirit from any kind of distraction so your focus is on the Holy Spirit. Your focus is on the mission. Your focus is not distracted. When you're pulling up your britches, your focus is distracted. If I had to stand here, get up, just to pull up my pants, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. So we have all this to keep our focus. The helmet. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Sorry. Got to find a place for those. The helmet of salvation, we might think, is for uphill. But with every climb, with every ascent, there's a descent. The helmet of salvation is for the whole time. But it's especially important. It's especially important to put it on for the descent. Hmm. I got a hmm. Wait for it. It's the times you feel like cruising where you're just sitting there like this, or like this, where you're just like sitting. You're like, I got this. I don't have to focus anymore. I don't have to pedal. It's that moment that you're going to wreck. It's that moment you're going to take a spill. It's that moment when you're going to fall off the horse and you're going to lose yourself. It's that moment you have to have the armor ready. You have to be prepared to fight everything off and say, you know what, with this armor, I'm, I'm going to stop everything. And I'm going to be able to go on. I was over by the Broadmoor one time and Lola was riding with me and, and there's this hill and we had to go up it and it was, it was fairly strenuous. It didn't look steep when you're on your bicycle, but when you're driving, it was like downhill. And it was probably about a mile and it was the first incline I've really ever done. And I decided one time, because we had turn around and, and go down it, and I knew I could catch a lot of speed on it. So I believe I was up to about 55 miles per hour. And there's this corner, and I'm like, it's not a sharp corner, I'll take it. So I start, I start on this corner, and there's some loose rocks underneath. The power of God allows you to recover. When you're spiritually going, and you think, oh, I've got this, and you lose focus for even a second, when you regain that focus, the power of God will allow you to recover. I didn't crash. I, I held my brake on a little bit. I slowed down a little bit, because in life, sometimes you've got to slow down a little bit to go. And you just recover. And you thank the Lord for it. And as you recover, you continue moving. And you continue pedaling with the, the shoes of the gospel. You have to remember, that's the goal. The goal is to let my friends know. The goal is to keep on being persistent. I might be pedaling my whole life for one person. But when I'm pedaling for one person, I'm pedaling for the whole world. Because that one person, when they become say when they know Jesus, when they follow Jesus, they, they're just thinking, how do I get this to the next person? And maybe they're pedaling for one person. Think if we all pedaled for just one person each. Right? If we're saying, you know what, your life is so important to me that I will fight for you. I will fight for you. But we have to have the armor of God. We have to place it on us. We have to have the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is where our confidence should lie. It's this reason, this is the reason I was willing to go 55 miles an hour down that hill and take that corner. Because I knew my head would be safe. Maybe. 
But in salvation, when we have the helmet of salvation, that's unpenetrable. It will not break. It's made of Nalgene bottles. That one, the unbreakable type. But God's Nalgene, not this one. This is man-made. It will break. Do you get what I'm saying tonight? Or this morning? Sorry, I went into youth pastor mode. Tonight, hey, youth, Wednesday night. It's Sunday morning. Then we got the sword of the Spirit. Anybody like accessing the sword of the Spirit? Mmm. What's the sword of the Spirit got for us? Ben, what could possibly resemble the sword of the Spirit? The most unlikely thing. There's two of them. I've got this little bag right under my seat. It carries all the tools I need to change a tire. It's accessing it. I got these pockets for snacks. You can either have good snacks or you could have junk. In your journey, if you access the junk, you will not go where you think you want to go. You won't go as far as you want to go. If you eat this, it'll give you quick energy that won't sustain you. But if you eat something more like this, you'll have energy to last. There are these things, I wish I would have gotten them for today. They're uh, waffles. They're honey waffles. The first time I ever tried one, the guy was like, it's like crack for cyclists. They are so good. And they will take you where you don't think you can go. See, when we access the Holy Spirit with the healthy snacks, we can go places we never dreamed of. But when we access the Holy Spirit wanting our own snack, the snack that comes from our own selfish desire, the one that tastes better, looks better, is bigger, has more calories, but it'll bog you down. See, the Holy Spirit comes in the most unlikely places, your back pockets. Oh, wait, you mean I can reach in there like it's my wallet, grab my wallet and be like, Holy Spirit, look at this! Ah, got you! Yeah! Heck yeah! But it all starts with the head and goes to the toes. See, we, we kind of did this backwards. It really starts with salvation. It starts with salvation. It starts with the Holy Spirit interceding on your behalf before salvation. Did you know that? In Romans it says, an utterance unknown to you will be spoken over you by the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, you mean the Holy Spirit is interceding on my behalf to Jesus for my salvation? Yep. Isn't that cool? I mean, it starts with the Holy Spirit, the back pockets, and it goes to salvation, and then it goes down to the truth. Or the shield of faith to protect you, and then the truth, and then the armor, and then the belt. We have a job ahead of us. We have a climb ahead of us. But if I come in here, these jeans are not meant for this bike. No jeans are. But I wasn't going to put you through the torture of wearing, having me wear a, what did you call it earlier? Not a leotard. The bibs, people. The bibs. You might be sitting there going, Ben, what, what protects you from the rain? What protects you from the storms on a bike? Some people have long sleeve jackets. I like rain. I like the way it feels when I'm cycling. I like the pain it causes on my face and my arms. So I have this waterproof vest. And I put on a vest to complete the body armor and say, rain, bring it on. Storms of life, you can't touch me. I like to feel a little bit of pain on my ride. Cyclists are notorious for having something on their, their bike that says something like, shut up legs. Or like the Marines, pain is only weakness leaving the body. If you're not in pain cycling, you're not cycling. That's something else cyclists say. That's why I love the four-mile inclines and the ten-mile inclines and all the inclines in the world because I know it's just my own flesh and blood leaving me so that I'm making more room for the Heavenly Father, for the Holy Spirit to work through me. And so in life, when life throws rain at us, Maybe we don't even want this. Maybe we're like, whatever, let's do this. God's got me. He's already put his armor on me. Rain can't get me down. The life battles can't bring me away. I'm going to pedal on. 
You can't stop the gospel from reaching the ends of the world. It's not going to happen. Oh, you bring it on, Hill. You got that? See, I haven't moved this front gear because it's already in the powerful gear. What we call the, the low gear. So if I keep on pedaling faster, I got this. Why? Because the Lord has me. Verse 18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. You have to prepare your mind for a long climb. And when you prepare your mind, you're preparing your clothing. It starts before the climb. Last week I asked you, you want to climb with me? It's going to be a long, hard climb. We're not always going to get along. It's okay. We're climbing for Christ, not for each other. Now my hair is going to be messed up. Some of you are sitting there going, Ben, your hair was already messed up. It's all right. Last week I told us that we have to pray so much that we sweat. It's work. This is part of it. Throwing on the armor of God only prepares you for the longest hike of your life. It's for the ones that you're thinking about right now that don't know Jesus. You put on the shoes, not because of them. It's because and for Christ. You just got to put them on. And if you want to protect your hands, you can. You can throw gloves on so you're ready. I told you I like pain. Ask Mark. I like pain. <laughs> Something I like. But are you ready? I'll have Ben come on up. I'll stop pedaling so you can hear his beautiful music. In a second, we're about ready to take communion. Communion is one of those things I can't, I can't unclip around, so I'm not getting to get off. Communion is one of those things, it's about people. It's about you, and it's about me, and it's about, it's about the work of the Lord. It's about the work of the Lord. And the Lord, the Lord wants to remind you about His love for you. Communion is going to be passed out, and I want you today to take it separately. And remember why you chose to fight for Him. I want Him to remind you why you chose to join up in this battle while you chose to join the climb. I want you to make yourselves right with him. If you have, by all means, meet with each other. I think that'd be awesome. God has called us all to a specific purpose, but if we don't dress the part, we'll never live the part. I told you I like cycling. I got all the stuff. You can carry the stuff and never use it either. Put it on. Put on everything that God's given you. When you said yes to Jesus, he said, here, put it on. So put it on. Get ready. Get on your bike and ride. That's a famous quote out of a song from uh, Queen, I think. Get on your bike and ride. Good song. Sometimes your climb looks a little different. You carry one of those. We'll get to that later. But today, we're getting on our bikes. We're, we're looking at that four-mile incline and going, Jesus, you've got something bigger for me. Send me. So this morning, as we prepare to take communion, and we remember that Jesus was sitting at the table, and he took the loaf of bread, and he said to his disciples, this bread I share with you, and he broke it. As a symbol of what he was going to do on the cross for you, he, under His power, under the power of God, went to the cross to be broken for everyone. Not just you. And His blood, He, he then took the cup and he, he looked at him, looked at His disciples and said, this cup is a symbol of my sacrifice as well. It's the symbol of my blood that will be poured out for you. 
a, a crimson that will take out any stain. A mom's dream for laundry. And Jesus had it. We've all got laundry. This is your moment. Let's pray. While I pray, I'll get communion ready, please. Jesus, thank you for giving us the tools, giving us your Holy Spirit to, to fix our flats or to re-energize us, Lord. Lord, thank you for allowing us to, to have a helmet of salvation that gives us confidence. Confidence to go as fast as you want. That we don't think twice, we just go because you've gone. Lord, thank you for, for the shoes that, that allow me to pull and push and, and take my trailer with my son in it. To teach him what it's like to go after others for the gospel. Lord, thank you for the shield that shields my eyes from anything that you don't want me to see. Thank you for the shield that, that shields any kind of dis disruption that might come my way. Lord, thank you for the belt of truth that says, I will not be exposed as a hypocrite, but as a follower of Jesus. Lord, thank you for the breastplate of righteousness that says nothing can penetrate my heart because you've already penetrated it. Jesus, we love you. We want to know you more. We want to, we want to be thankful even more today than yesterday for who you are. So Lord, wreck us this morning. In this moment of communion, wreck us, God. Destroy us for what makes you better. Give us your vision. Give us your desire. Help us pedal into who you want us to be. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you are, everything you want to be. Lord, we love you. And all God's people say, amen.